For the following exercises, determine the domain and the range of the quadratic function. And then we have two examples here. Okay, so the first thing is, is that we have some written words down here. And if you want more context as to where we got this, go check out the the uh, last video in this playlist. That's where I actually write this stuff down and give you the context, okay? The playlist quadratic functions is in the description. The link is down below. It's the video before this one, okay? So we know that the domain of quadratic functions are super easy. Write this down if you want to, but the domain is all real numbers for quadratics. There are no exceptions. Because a quadratic, if I just quickly just draw this out, right, a quadratic will span the x-axis from always negative infinity to positive infinity, no matter what. So for both of these, since they are quadratics, the domain is from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, or you can say this like weird R, that means all real numbers. It's just preference of what your teacher or professor wants. Keep in mind that this is for quadratics, not linear, not other, you know, not absolute values, not square roots. For quadratic functions, they are all real numbers. So we answered one piece of the puzzle already. Since it is a quadratic, the domain, the x value, um, basically possibilities is all real numbers, negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Okay, now we just got to get that range. And from what we know, the range of a quadratic always stems from that k value. If you have a maximum value, Basically, if your graph is frowning at you, you see how you will have a maximum value? That's the highest you can go. That's your k value. So you can be anywhere from negative infinity all the way to that max value. But if your graph is a smiley face, right, you will have a min value all the way down here. And you could only go up from there. So... That's where you start your k value as the minimum value, and you can go all the way, all the way to positive infinity. So, how do I know if I have a max value or a min value? It comes from the a value, whether it's negative or positive. If a is negative, you'll have a max value. You'll have this type of notation. If your a value is positive, you'll have a min value. You'll have this type of notation. So, let's just write that down. This one, for f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 4, it looks like they gave it to us in the general form, right? This is not the standard form. This is the general form. And in the general form, the a value is in front of the x squared, the b value is in front of just the x, and the c values are at the end. So in this case, if I can just list out what a, b, and c are, my a value, there's no number here, so it's a 1. So I have an a of 1, I have a b of 6, and I have a c of 4. My a value is a 1. It's a positive value. So I know that if my a is a positive, I'm going to have a min -imum. A min -im, hold on, a min, min -imum value. So I know that my range has to start with some minimum value, and I will go all the way to infinity. But now the question is, what the heck is this number, right? That's the k value. We have to solve for the k value. We've done tons of problems in which we have found the k value. And remember, you find it from a general form in two steps. The first thing you got to do is you got to find the h value first. The h is the x component of your vertex. And remember, h is just negative b over 2a. So if I do this math, negative 6, right? Negative 6 divided by 2 times a, which is 1. So this is the same thing as saying negative 6 over 2 
but 6 divided by 2 is a negative 3. So my h value is a negative 3. I'm just going to erase this just for uh, we got some room here. So my h value is a negative 3. Now we go to number 2. We find that k value. And remember, from all the previous lessons that we've done, k value is f of h. All you're doing is you're plugging in. Plugging in h for the variable. This was my formula, right? My formula was equal to x squared plus 6x plus 4. And that was all equal to f of x. But now I know that my h value is a negative 3. So all I'm going to do is wherever I see an x value, I'm going to plug in the negative 3 value. So I'm going to plug in a negative 3 for this one. And I'm going to plug in a negative 3 over here. Now let's just do the math. So I'll do it over here. K, which is what we're trying to find out, equals negative 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a 9. 6 times a negative 3 is a negative 18 plus 4. So K would equal 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 4 is a negative 5. So I have a K value of a negative 5. And that is my minimum value. So I know that my k has to go here, and it starts at a negative 5. That's the minimum value, and we go up to infinity, and there are your two answers. Now, let's do the next one. So we already have the domain. This is perfect. We need to find whether we're talking about a max or a minimum, right, depending on what my notation is going to be. And remember, that stems from the a value. So if I section these off, right, the a value is always in front of the x squared, the b value is always in front of the x, and the c value is all by its lonesome. So if I just list this out, a, b, and c, my a is a 2, my b is a negative 4, and then my c is a 2. Key in on that a value, my a value here is a positive, right? My a value is 2, it's a positive, so that means that I'm going to have a minimum. So my range has to follow this idea, just like the other one. I know that I'm going to have a number here, comma, infinity. I'm going to have a minimum value, and I can go all the way up to infinity. But now here's the question. What is that minimum value? We need to find out what the k value is. And I'm just moving this because I just want a little bit more room. And maybe, oh, maybe I can put this down here. Okay. Two steps. One, we have to actually find the h value first. h is negative b divided by 2a. So negative b, b was a negative 4, divided by 2 times 2. Negative times a negative is a positive 4, divided by 2 times 2 is 4, so this really equals 1. So my h value is just equal to 1. And now what we do is we just take that value and plug that number in for all of the x's in our formula to find out the k. That's the second step. We've got to find k, which is just f of h. Plug in h for all of the x's. So I had 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. So get rid of all of those x's and plug in the number that you just found, which was a 1. So 1 here, 1 here. And this is going to equal k, right? So 1 squared is 1, 2 times 1, right? Minus 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2. 2 times 1 is just a 2. So I can just get rid of that, bring this in. Work from left to right, 2 minus 4 is a negative 2, plus 2 is a 0. 
So my k value just equals whoop, just equals zero. And that is my minimum value. I have to put that in here. So my range would be from zero, that minimum value, all the way to infinity. And there are your two answers. And that's it. This question's done. Well, these questions are done. So guys, what do you think? This one was a little bit more challenging because they gave you the general form and not the standard form. But we got this. We've done tons of problems getting H's and K's, and that's basically quadratic functions. All right? So let me know in the comments what you think. Give this video a like if it helped. And, uh, yeah. You guys are great. All right? I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.